Thank you, Sharon. Good evening. It is All-Ireland Hurling final weekend. This year's unique pairing of Waterford and Galway has certainly captured the imagination. Last night we were in the West. Tonight it's the South East. Let's hear first from our Gaelic Games correspondent Marty Morrissey on Waterford's bid to end that 58-year wait. It's 1959 and Waterford have just won the All-Ireland Hurling title after a replay. It was only their second ever All-Ireland and they haven't won it since. It's unbelievable if somebody in 1959 said that, they'd be laughed at. And another statistic about it too, in all those years there was no draws. In a game like hurling with scores of 222 and all that, and it was only in recent years there was a few draws together. The present Waterford side have been building nicely under the guidance of this man, Derek McGrath, but he acknowledges the Deche face a huge challenge. The magnitude of the task is huge. There's a reason why Galway are one to two favourites, but look, we're there on merit, we feel, and, and uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. Waterford are well known to having their own style and system. The players are happy with it and fully focused. It's a very simple cliche that we can control what we can control and we're going to focus on what we can control, and that's ultimately our own performance and how we play, and you know that's obviously dictated by how we go to train and how we perform on the training field, and it's very simple. Look, Galway are region hot favourites for a reason. Uh, Super team, uh, Michael O'Donoghue has done a super job and uh, you know we have to get our, try and get ourselves really right if we're to have any chance. Every mode of transport will be used by Waterford fans to get to Croke Park next Sunday. There's a huge buzz, a huge anticipation, great excitement. Can Waterford bridge the gap going way back to 1959? It's Waterford against Galway in this unique All-Ireland final. It's live on the Sunday game, live on RT Radio 1. Marty Morrissey, RT News, Waterford. So Waterford back in the final for the first time since 2008. Excitement across the county is palpable as our South East correspondent Damien Tiernan has been finding out. This is Jake and we're getting ready to go for the match. Jake the donkey getting his colours. Animal friendly paint of course, along with the sheep up at Mahan Falls. No, I said oh, when the brick will get it by, he'll let When the, the brick will get it, oh, and the, the brick. <laughs> All over the county, the excitement has been building. White and blue everywhere. Brenda Foley has knitted something for former Waterford player John Milan. This is a little apron for John Milan because John said that he's going to go down the quay in Waterford in the nude. So I thought, well, while I'm celebrating, I don't want the, one of the best hurlers in Waterford arrested. Lifelong fans hope this is going to be Waterford's year. I, I, I think they're good enough uh, and they have the experience now and it is their year. They'll never get a better chance. Well, I reckon they'll do it anyway. Yeah? Well, I was nine years away the last time I saw the cup here and I hope to see it again here. The three Bennett brothers on the squad are from Bally Saggart. Their grandmother says if Waterford win, it'll be something really special. What would it mean for Bally Saggart? Oh. Oh, I'd hate to see it. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go to bed until Christmas, I'd imagine. <laughs> so from Passage East to Clashmore, they're ready for Sunday. And Jake the donkey is on the road already. Well, let's go live to Waterford now. Damien is in Passage East. Uh, Damien, huge excitement as we've seen there, but how's the confidence in Waterford? There is huge excitement, Claire, and yet it's somewhat grounded. We're in Passage East Hurling Club on Pasoshta. Joining me now is two-time All-Star winner Owen Kelly. Owen, um, what's the most important thing for these players, these Waterford players, this week and obviously then building into Sunday? I suppose just uh, the supporters can enjoy the week, like, you know, building into the match. But I think the players really need to focus on their training, which they're doing. Um, they train Tuesday, I think they train tonight. And then Sunday, 70 minutes is for the players behind the white lines to, to win the match. Like All the build-up in that can be all done, but you have to play it, perform on the day. It doesn't matter about the build-up in a way, that's what you're saying? Yeah, it don't. Like The, the, the supporters can enjoy it, but the players, all that's in their minds is winning all our middle on Sunday, and I think they're very focused on doing that. Are they confident? Um, yeah, I, I'd say they are. I'd say they're very confident. They've come through good, tough matches, Kilkenny, Cork, Wexford, Offaly... Um, the first day against Cork, OK, things didn't go their way, but they have tough matches behind them, as do Galway. So there's two confident teams in there. Yeah, they're not overconfident, exactly. Uh, what do Waterford need to do to win on Sunday? 
Um, I think just keep going the way they're going, keep performing the way they are, stick to the game plan that's working for them with the sweep or the, the flying underneath that. And just with the last 15 minutes they're in with a shout, I think they, they'll bring Lee McCarthy home. It will be an unbelievable scenes in Waterford if they do bring the Lee McCarthy home. Obviously, it'd be unbelievable in Galway as well for them. 58 years since the Lee McCarthy was here in Waterford. Claire, back to you in the studio.